Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Plane Reviews in Kerbal Swiss Ram. Yes, I'm a bit slow starting out, yes. So today, not sure exactly what I'm doing. Might be a shorter episode, might not, I don't know. I don't trust my estimates anymore. Um, this, the BP Mark 1 DEMVNR, or as I like to call it now, Alphabet Soup. Uh, this was created by CMACAWP. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. It's a stunt plane designed to be extremely maneuverable with quick takeoff speeds. Parachutes are added to decrease casualties. Of course, of course. The interesting thing I find about it is, why do you have rock sepatrons firing with the parachutes? I mean, surely you'd want to slow down, not speed up when you fire the parachutes. Don't know what you're thinking there, but let's go ahead and give it a fly. Oh, and before I forget to mention it entirely, Everything that we're taking a look at today was by this uh, CMAC Co-op, however you're supposed to pronounce uh, C-M-A-C-A-W-P. So, yep, it's one of those episodes where it's all by the fucking shit that I, I fucked up, but everything is awesome because we're still alive. With a nice little fire. <laughs> Something else exploded right when I paused. So yes, this particular craft is definitely super maneuverable, and it also has a... Yeah, it's a pretty low takeoff speed, and uh, you just got to be careful not to fly it like a complete idiot like I did, and I'm doing again, but maybe this time it'll go better. Yep, see, I waited until we got a little bit higher, a little more speed up before doing something stupid. Oh, jeez, this thing does not have good roll control. I was expecting it to have good roll control, especially since it said it's supposed to be a stunt plane, but uh, it did not. Yeah, the roll control, even even when you're going in a straight line, the roll control is very, very minimal. Very slight roll control. The uh, pitch control is extreme. And it looks like it doesn't quite have a, uh, a thrust to weight ratio above one. Because uh, else I would have been just fine there. So overall, I'd say it's alright for a stunt plane. But uh, not quite the best, because I would think, ooh, that's nice, pretty blue lights. I would think that... Uh, that you should have a thrust to weight ratio above one so that if you do something particularly stupid you don't get killed by it and it also of course has terrible maneuverability in the middle well when you stall out because it has only a what is it like one degree thrust vectoring on the turbojet ah, it does not have enough oh there's a blue light on that too that's nice it does not have good enough roll control unfortunately it being only four minutes into the recording, and me pretty much being done with the first of only four planes, makes me think that this episode is going to indeed be very short. But in any case, yeah, uh, unfortunately, like, it has it has great maneuverability on the pitch axis, but that's about it, and then once it stalls, it loses almost everything. And uh, I believe this would work much better if it just had the Panther engine. See, now I'm completely out of control and I can barely roll in time to avoid crashing into the ground. So yes, this definitely, oops, could be much improved. Oh, I just did a uh, negative pitch. Look at that. Be just just super high amounts of blue glow just lighting up the ground from all the way up here. That's great. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the uh, parachutes. I... Once again, I'm not really sure what the point of the Sepatrons is to fire them with the parachutes. Because, I mean, I'd fire parachutes when I'm about to crash and, like, try and survive. But this instead is like... Oh, let's go a little faster when we fire the parachutes, because that'll go well. And, of course, the cockpit just breaks right off. I'm going to do one more silly thing before I move on to the next. And that silly thing is to fly this pretty much straight at the SPH and uh, and then pull the fucking parachutes unless I completely fuck up because it is extremely unstable on the pitch axis. That's how this plane does make me think of a new series of videos I'd like to do sometime soon that uh, I hope works out well. I'm, I'm thinking of doing another career thing but I'm thinking of trying to make sure that wow I'm completely out of control right now. That's quite terrible. Um, yeah, uh, uh, like a career series, but see the problem with career series, and I'll explain it when I do that video, whatever, however I do the first video. Okay, parachute go, save me. 
again, the Sepatrons, I, I don't understand. Please explain, because I don't get why you'd do that. Hey, that time we didn't break anything. Basically, I was just trying to say, I think I know what would make me do a better career series, and I'm going to try that. But uh, as for this design, I don't like it too much. It's it's just got some massive problems, and that's unfortunate. Next up, we have the Volucris 2, which of course uses the Panther engines. Oh, that's interesting. I like the idea of putting the air brakes on the wings, because that's not something I've seen before. Ah, and it uses adjustable landing gear. The intake is... Ah, uh, wait a second. Okay. Huh. That's slightly strange, but it looks alright. It's kind of weird, though, how because of just how KSP works and where you've had to put the uh, various, like, the control surfaces and wings and stuff, how the wing looks like it's far too forward. At least to me, it looks like it's far too forward, but no, it's it's perfectly balanced. And what does this say? One to talk engine mode. Yes. All right. Here goes. Oh, yeah. I feel like this thing could do a lot. And you know what? It's not going fast enough for me. Let's engage the afterburners. And go in the cockpit, because why not? Oh, uh, yeah. See, this is a fighter. Oh, yes. This is fun to fly. Oops. Okay, has a similar roll control issue when you're going at a low... Um, maybe not a low speed, but stalled? Let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, it's low speed and stalled. Like, I'm pitching as hard as I can. I mean, rolling as hard as I can, and it's not working. And now I'm going backwards, and... Uh, oh, my engines actually died during that. I didn't even notice, but they died during that. Hold on, let me do some extreme, like, pitching around, and let's see, let's see if we can get the engines to die again. Yeah, see, one of them dies and then comes back for a moment there, because we lose the airflow doing all that extreme maneuvering. It's definitely fun to fly, though. Oops, I did not mean to do that. Fortunately, this thing is very maneuverable. Yeah, other than that slight roll control issue, which is a very difficult thing to deal with. I've, I've tried to deal with that sometimes with certain designs and planes, and it's it's very difficult to get the roll just right. Not too touchy, not too not touchy. Okay, um, let's, uh, let's hopefully survive this. Yeah, squeaky. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes. That was nice. Yeah, I really like that design. I very like it. Very, very like it. That sounds weird. Two things I didn't really try out, though, with it is, well, how fast it can go, and also the air brakes, because I'm curious about those two things. Yeah, see, it has really good roll when you're going faster. Of course it does, because, you know, the control surfaces work really well when you're going fast. But uh, it's just when you're doing those maneuvers, it uh, kind of slows down. Let's see. So... Still accelerating at a pretty good clip, and we're at 500 meters per second. So yeah, this thing definitely goes very fast. Air brakes can slow it right down. Yeah, high Gs, high Gs. This is making me think of, um, I actually just made the Skyhawk Mark III. I'll be making a video on that pretty soon, hopefully. And, uh, yeah. It's funny how this performs fairly similar to the Skyhawk Mark III, although the Skyhawk Mark III is, uh, using turbojets. I'm talking about as far as having air brakes deployed and engines running. Actually, no, wait. I think that goes much faster. Never mind. I'm going to shut up now and let us get back to high speed and then pull up really hard to see if this thing will break apart, which I assume it will, but uh, I don't know. Um, I forgot to look too close. Are there any struts noticeable? I don't think there are, so I think it probably will not survive doing this. Yeah, I didn't think so. See, that's why you don't do that. That's why you don't do that. That's great. The great thing is, is that because of the new water physics, we'll probably survive this. Let's see. Oh, oops. Okay. Just aim like that. And <laughs> glide it in. Glide it in. I, I bet I could fucking glide this in. Let's look at the aerodynamics. So, so we're just having a lot of drag. And then if I just pull up real sharp, now we're having a whole ton of lift and dead. Yeah, the angle was far too steep. Next up, we have the Volucris... VII, uh, that's seven. Seven. The Volucris 7, which has, uh, more of a Delta wing. This one is apparently based, uh, somewhat on an F-22, which I can see, I can see the inspiration. I can see the, uh, similarity. It's definitely got, like, a similar profile. Very cool. I like it. I like the look of it. Oh, wow, I just noticed you're using one of these freaking heavy-ass landing gear on the front. See, I, I would recommend, uh, like, going into here 
and going and scaling it down a bit because it looks slightly ridiculous. I don't know, just to me it looks slightly ridiculous, like just a little too big. But then again, eh, not that bad actually. Alright, so this one comes with a warning that it might be a little unstable on the runway. And uh, are, are your wheels correctly aligned? Because that usually is a pretty big cause. Yeah, this the kind of instability this is exhibiting is definitely looks like what you get when the wheels aren't quite lined up right. But uh, flies pretty good to start. Yep. I like this. I'm drifting in a plane. Let's go ahead and activate the afterburners. Ah, yeah. Pitch up. Very high Gs. Very maneuverable. Not going to crash into the ground. Okay, good. Oops, I accidentally hit X. There we go. Throttle back up. Point at the SPH. Make it to my bitch. No, um, what? Sorry. I think I was channeling Robus for a split second there. I don't know why. Okay, pull up. Spin, pull up, and very nice, very nice. Flies uh, very similar to the last one, except I believe the roll is a lot more improved on this one. Yes, the roll is definitely improved, and I'd say uh, overall it's a little bit more maneuverable. I'd say it performs a little bit better, which is nice. Oh, come on, yep, which makes sense. I mean, it's like the improved version of the design. Hmm. Then again, I think the other one the other one was less massive, I believe, so it had kind of a higher speed. You know, they definitely I think they both both designs definitely have their strengths and weaknesses, and my voice went strange there because I thought I'd accidentally pitched a little too hard and was gonna crash right then. But uh obviously my concerns were unfounded. Okay, activate the air brake. And of course, uh I'm telling it to go really fast while activating the air brake, so it's uh, still going to go pretty fast. All right, let's turn that off, get to high speed, and then break this one apart too. This just looks so cool. This one can't quite get up to the same speed as the last one, but uh, let's break it apart anyhow. Very nice. <laughs> Deploy our giant ass landing gear. Wow, does that clip on the door slightly? Hold on. Oh no, it clears it just barely. I thought that was clipping on the door. That's crazy. Okay, let's get out. Oops. Yep. And last today, we have the Volacris 15 Interceptor, which has stock landing gear. This is an entirely stock plane, isn't it? Interesting. I like the, uh, it's, it's, it's got the sharp nose on it. It definitely looks, looks fast. And, uh, it's got a turbojet, so it's supposed to be fast. I like how it has uh, under wing stabilizers as well as the mm, excuse me as well as the uh, rear top stabilizer. That is interesting. <laughs> I like <laughs> the the uh, the game thinks that its uh, lift is pointing down. Maybe it is. Maybe it is slightly. It does look like the wing. I'm not quite sure. Is it slightly angled down? I can't quite tell. See, if it is, that could make sense for when it's at high speeds at high altitudes. Also, um, the the engine being like slightly tilted up. Because the thing is, you're going to be flying at a higher angle of attack, higher in the atmosphere, to keep enough lift. So you might want to have like the intakes angled slightly down to get better air, the engine angled slightly up to be thrusting more along the axis of flight, you know, that kind of thing. Although, I don't think this has any of that. The wing, I'm not quite sure. I feel like it's ever so slight, like half a degree or one degree or something, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a little slow to get started, but uh, I kind of expected that. You know, having only a single turbojet on the back of this for something this size. And, uh, of course, once we get to 400 meters per second, this thing will really start picking up speed. But uh, we have to get to far. I like... I just I just noticed how this... Ah, this, uh, it's clipping over the door. So sad. Because otherwise, I really like how smooth this transition is. Like, other than the clip... Like, the this weird clipping weirdness that becomes visible only when you look really close like you only notice that when you're looking for it you know what i mean like you can't tell that it looks a little bit strange from here really it's only when you like look at it that's the only time it actually becomes visibly like a bit strange it's too bad the stock landing gear is so bulky it just looks so weird i like it though it makes me think of a duck i don't know why this makes for some reason I don't know why this just says duck to me, which 
Makes no fucking sense. Uh, we need to go be going faster. It's stabilized. It's completely stabilized at 350.5. Oh, now it's 0.5. But yeah, that's interesting. Oh, now it's going slightly faster. I'm going to pitch down slightly in the hopes of getting it to gain more speed and then pitch up again once we start accelerating past 400 meters per second if we can get there see that's the thing with the turbo jets they don't do as well below 400 meters per second but once you get up to 400 meters per second they do really well and uh, so I'm just trying to get up to 400 meters per second in fact I probably should be uh, trying to get up to 400 meters per second higher in the atmosphere so I should actually be pitching up more to just get up more but uh, I don't care right now. I might be flying this slightly wrong. I, I don't care. It's uh, the fuel supply on it is, let's see, we've used like 10% of our fuel going out, uh, going to four kilometers and out this far. If it was flown better, because obviously I didn't fly this the way it really should be flown, it would probably get higher, quicker, and then thus, and using less fuel and, uh, and also thus be able to go further. It's got, it's got, it's definitely got the, uh, F-22 inspired wing shape, I think. Not the tailplane, of course, but uh, the wing shape definitely seems inspired by that. Alright, I'm pitching down again. And we're getting very close to 400 meters per second. And there you go. Now you can see that once we've gotten to 400 meters per second, it's accelerating more steadily on its own. And uh, I could even start pitching up again if I wanted to. I'm, uh, I'm not going to write just yet because I'm letting it kind of stabilize I guess I could say. I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of room to accelerate before I pitch up too much. There you go. So that I can keep going. Of course if I was higher in the atmosphere I'd be able to go faster. Which is part of why I need to pitch up more. Ooh. That uh, that just had a little knock to the side there. That's interesting. But yeah you can see that um, I'm having a much easier time with thrust now that I'm above 400 meters per second. And uh the reason I'm doing this, by the way, I think I think it said it in the craft name. This is an interceptor, so an interceptor you want to go high and fast, go and attack a thing. It's like the uh, the F-104 was an interceptor, so, and this is this is similar at least in the uh, it's it's got kind of the similar intake, although the F-104's intakes were further back. Of course, uh, lower down it was more it was a more streamlined, I guess I could say, uh, design, and it also had a turbo turbojet like this well I don't know if the actual thing had a turbojet per se but I mean my design of it whatever the the tailplane similar the wings different of course but uh ooh, we're going pretty damn fast now yeah so turbojets they can they can get used to some pretty serious speed they may have a slow start but they can get you going very very fast and this thing wants to pull up a little bit I'm trying to pitch it down a little because I know already we're probably on a trajectory that's bringing us pretty high. Yeah, oops, come on. Close the map view, thank you. And uh, we don't want our trajectory to go too high because then we'll just leave the atmosphere and not have any more air. Also, I'm annoyed that they removed intake air from the resources thing because I found that very useful to see whether I was about to run out of air or not. And now you have to right click on an intake to find out. Which is unfortunate, but oh well. Look at that. Yeah, we're about to run out of air pretty pretty soon here, which is why I'm pitching down. We're also losing speed. Okay. I've pitched down to what I think is comfortable. Look at that. Very nice. And we're having a pretty steady flow because I've pretty much leveled off. In fact, we're going down slightly. And this is the part where I'm talking about you have an angle of attack here where if that was tilted by a couple degrees, it might squeeze a little bit more efficiency out of this. But uh, I don't care about that right now. What I do care about is I'm just going to do this. Wow. Look at that. Just shunted it up. Losing a lot of speed doing that, of course. But also changing our trajectory quite dramatically considering high, how high of an altitude this is. Look at this, reaching for space, the edge of space. I mean, we're, you know, we're still pretty low, but when you think about how atmosphere, it's it's an exponential drop-off. This is, I mean, the edge of space is a large area. The edge of space isn't just like a line. Okay. 
I forget what the number is, but it's actually like a really low number and you're already above 99% of the atmosphere because that's just how it works. Which is pretty fucking insane. Definitely interesting. Yeah, see, we're, we're so high up that we're basically not having aerodynamic forces. Oh, shit. Let, yeah, let's turn that off because uh, I don't want to kill us. Lots of drag. Coming in hot. I'm going to go ahead and turn down the time warp. Huh, that's interesting. Getting quite a bit of lift off of the cockpit there. And then if I pull up and see, gains quite a bit of drag. Wow. Yeah, I didn't want to actually break this apart. I wanted to, uh, out in the open seas, demonstrate its uh, capabilities in maneuvering because being an interceptor fighter kind of thing is what it's supposed to be, I'm pretty sure. And uh, I definitely would want to uh, see it see it in action, you know, how it maneuvers around when it's not going at a super high altitude at a super high speed. So it's not the best maneuverability. Like, it, it can't turn on a dime. But I think it would be relatively effective. It definitely has the uh, going high speed, high altitude, get somewhere quick. And uh, it can pull a lot of Gs. Yeah, I think the main thing is you'd want to have chaff and flares on it. Because it's not going to flat out dodge something on its own, I don't think. But then again, then again, that was a pretty freaking sharp turn I just did. Oh, you know what? I noticed. I just noticed that. This thing maneuvers a lot better at higher speeds. At lower speeds, it doesn't maneuver very well at all. But now that we've gone faster, it maneuvers very, very quickly. And it also doesn't lose a lot of speed doing those maneuvers. So actually, I think this would be very effective. Nice. Let's see. A, a sustained turn will start to drop the speed, though. But we're still at a pretty effective speed overall because it seems to me could be wrong on this but it seems to me that above 200 meters per second this thing is very effective at turning and it's just when you go below 200 meters per second that's when it starts to lose its effectiveness so right now we're losing that so interesting very nice <laughs> okay avoid excessive yaw controls which is really a, a thing that you want to know for like any plane but this one in particular, I just put it into a freaking spin by excessive yaw controlling. Ah, oh, come on. Is this an unrecoverable spin? I believe this is... Oh, okay, we're... we're no, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, oh, almost. Yeah, uh, unrecoverable spin from excessive yaw control. Wait, maybe, maybe. Come on, pitch it into the airflow. Yeah, this is... All right, so be careful. This thing can get into an unrecoverable spin. However, never mind, I was about to say, no wait, yeah, no, yes, yes. Oh, okay, the root part is not the cockpit. See, see, we survived that. I mean, the plane broke up, but we survived that. Very nice. <laughs> Docking mode. One quick thing I forgot with the Vul Vulcris 7 that I wanted to check is, are these aligned? And the answer is no. And I bet you that with that tiny modification I just made, this thing will lose its instability on the runway. All right, here we go on the runway. Gonna go ahead and throttle up for, uh, or rather turn on the afterburner. Okay, I was wrong. I was wrong, that didn't help. Um, or maybe it did help, but just not as much as, uh, not as why is the, land oh, I hit T instead of G. Yeah, maybe that did help, just uh, not that much. Maybe it didn't at all, but, uh, Oh well, what you gonna do? Just be careful taking off, and uh, I assume be careful landing. Let's go ahead and land this thing. Okay. Oh. Oops, that was slightly not what I meant to do. Whoops. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That, not good. <laughs> Does make pretty sparks though. Ooh, ejected from the wreckage. Wow. All right, I'm gonna try landing it one more time and seeing if maybe if I land at a lower speed, if that'll be okay. But uh, that's all for now. 
Thanks for watching, and as always, I'll see you in space. Yeah, space. That place that I never go except in Star Maid, apparently. Did I go to the moon? I went to the moon recently. Relatively recently. I didn't do something else. I'm talking when I shouldn't be. Oh well. This thing could definitely land on a carrier. Unfortunately, you have too much braking torque on the front landing gear.